Welcome to Market Pulse by SE Securities and Daily FT. As usual, our effort is to bring you the expert insight for you to have a better pulse about the equity markets of Sri Lanka. And today, our focus is on a prominent and influential listed entity catering to the construction sector with a redefined excellence and innovation. They have made themselves positioned as the market leader for the wood coating in Sri Lanka with a very strong global presence, which is none other than JAT Holdings PRC. To talk about JAT, we have with us today the visionary leader and the managing director of JAT Holdings, Mr. Elian Gunarthanan, and the chief executive officer, Mr. Nishal Ferdinandu. Elian, Nishal, welcome to Market Pulse. Thanks. Thank you, Dilisha. So, Elian, to start off, uh, first of all, congratulations on completing 30 years and celebrating 30th anniversary of Jet Holdings. And uh, to start off, let's talk a little bit about the inspiring journey of Jet Holdings for the past three decades. Yes, yeah, certainly. Very interesting subject. Um, I founded Jet Holdings 30 years ago, as you said. The, it all started when I was working at another paint company as the marketing manager for this paint company. And I was looking after the industrial market, all the furniture manufacturers at that time. When I realized that there wasn't a high-end wood coating in the market, we had a very inferior uh, and primitive kind of system, which was based on nitrocellulose, uh, which is a single component wood coating. And when you have single component wood coatings, what happens is the coating dries when the, when the solvent evaporates. So if any, any corrosive substance, solvent or anything falls on it, it dissolves the coating. And we had polish and very mo even more primitive coating. So I thought it was the right time, at the, uh, this was 30 years ago in 1993, when we actually introduced more superior wood coatings to the market like two component polyurethanes, for example. And I went to in, and spoke to, about this to my board at that time. And, uh, you know, like most large companies, you know, this, the board was discussing about it, but there was a lot of procrastination that actually started my entrepreneurial journey. You know? And, uh, you know, when they were taking time over it, I thought, why not me? And uh, that's when I started Jack. So that, has, that was the start to br bring in two-pack polyurethane coatings instead of just the normal nitrocellulose to the market. Uh, we started, of course, with a company of two or three of us. Uh, and today, we've, after 30 years, grown to about 400 employees. So it's been a steady and, and, and really fantastic growth. Mm. We started with, obviously, being Sri Lanka being our, our primary market. And now we've gone into different markets in the world. We've gone into a lot of markets in the subcontinent and African countries um, with, with much more plans for the future. In, in 2021, we listed the company. Now JET is a public coded company. And that's something we are very, very proud of. So the journey has been from a typical, you know, single owner, proprietor kind of company, now grown to a listed company which is run uh, by Nishal, our CEO, now handling the whole, whole operation of the company as our CEO. So it's moved from a typical family-oriented company to a, uh, a, a, a large corporate. That's indeed very inspiring. Thanks. And uh, Adrian, as you mentioned, now you are uh, in several countries at the moment. But you are the uh, market leader in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Maldives, all three countries in wood coating. Um, what is about the product portfolio? What do you have? And in each of these markets, what kind of a market share you control? Yes, yeah, so, so all these markets, whether it was Sri Lanka, Bangladesh or Maldives, uh, was in that same primitive stage when we went into each, each and every one of them. When we came into Sri Lanka, I told you we had only nitrocellulose. When we went to Bangladesh, we didn't even have nitrocellulose. We had just uh, polish, you know, uh, uh, where, where the coating was applied with a wad. Uh, in the Maldives, they were using just, uh, again, French polish on their, on their exterior timber. And that was very, very inferior. I mean, it, the outdoor or UV resistance of that is, is very, very poor. So what happened was when we went into different markets like Bangladesh and Maldives about 20 years ago, 
or a little more than 20 years ago, we had to again bring the same learnings that we had from Sri Lanka with the two polyurethanes initially to convert what they had, which was very primitive, to a high-end wood coating. And thankfully, those markets were more receptive to change, you know, and what we did was like we do with all our markets, we send our technicians, we base them there. Uh, I personally travel every month almost to these, these markets in order to, to find the right customer, find correct distributors and so on, and introduce our product. Um, and we, of course, subsequently, I mean, over time in 1998, the year 2000, we introduced water-based coatings as well. Then in Bangladesh, we introduced PU coatings. So the range of coatings we introduced has helped us to keep a market share of, now in Sri Lanka, we have about 55% market. In Bangladesh, we have about 40% of the, of, the, of the total market, about maybe easily about 80% of the mm -hmm. high-end market. In Maldives, we control also about 40-50% of the wood coating market. So because we've introduced new technology, because we've introduced it with great technical service, we've been able to control that market and the market share. Wonderful. And um, Vishal, uh, we've heard about the recent ad addition to Jack Paints uh, Africa Limited in Kenya, um, to Jack Group. Uh, what is the objective behind Jack going into Kenya? Right, so I think the same thing that Elian said. Initially, when we went to Bangladesh, uh, when we uh, in, uh, initiated in Sri Lanka, it was a primitive market. Now, Africa at the moment, it's at that same stage that Sri Lanka and Bangladesh were probably 20, 25 years back. So we saw this as a strategic market where we could convert the market into high quality wood finishers. So with this, strategically, the location was Kenya. But though it's Kenya, East Africa has a, uh, a treaty where you have uh, duty benefits and all of that. So though the head office is in Kenya, we are looking at Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, that part of the East African segment. So with this, we have a joint venture with a Kenyan company and we, launch, and we launched uh, Jack Paints Africa. And I think now we have probably sent about two to three containers there and we have about 15 customers and some permanent customers now who have shifted. So the shift already has started from the primitive wood coatings to PU water base. So we are very excited about uh, this venture. And also it's the right time in Africa now because Africa is probably going to see uh, growth rates of double digits very soon, right? especially a country like Kenya. So what we thought was if we establish there and grow there, thereafter we can uh, reach to the other countries and we have started manufacturing there as well, right? So uh, we, we installed our plant from about a uh, month back and with this so we are looking at Africa as one of our next emerging markets. And uh, also Michelle, uh, the uh, JV in Saudi Arabia. That is a recent announcement uh, to the stock yes. exchange as well. And uh, with this, uh, you have incorporation. This is the incorporation of Vault Industries company. Yes. And uh, I saw that it's a, it's entering into a totally different market from Correct. Chad. Correct. And this is into uh, electrical vehicle chargers. Yeah. And uh, what is uh, the motive of Jack to go into a totally different market? Right. So uh, we have traditionally focused and not traditionally and also now we are focusing on our core business with a lot of backward vertical uh, initiatives, forward vertical initiatives and horizontal initiatives that is with our core business. But we also have another objective that we want our dollarized revenue to reach about 50% of our total revenue. So at the moment we are at around 30. So in about two years we are looking at this 50%. So with this and Jack being one of the pioneers in innovation, yeah. right? And we are not scared to do new things, right? So we saw EV charges as a futuristic business. So we wanted to invest in a futuristic business, which also would uh, result in a dollarized revenue. And what better region to do this than Middle East? 
because at the moment i think middle east is the most thriving region in the world right so we 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 collaborated with a very good partner in saudi called safari group and uh, we have about 40% of this investment and on top of that we actually uh, we have a technical partnership with a sri lankan firm for the technology that is headed by uh, dr beshan kulapala who was one of the him and his team so the entire team there were the ones who developed the supercar in sri lanka and also the ev charging network in sri lanka so we have that expertise and he is acting as the head of research there so it doesn't diversify our sort of time and energy towards it because there's a professional team running it and a very good jv partner who will take care of the saudi uh, the operations and the sales so that x primary as a investor and uh, if you if you look at our investment portfolio the percentage of this is about 10% of our total investment so the balance 90 has been put back to the co business okay and uh, one of the ipo promises was setting up the state of the art manufacturing facility yes. and uh, i think jack has uh, achieved that target way before the uh, promised time period as well and how does this manufacturing facility contributing to jack and uh, what kind of a contribution you are looking at in the future with yes. this so this manufacturing facility is in bangladesh right and that was the promise that we made and like i said in my previous question we have invested a lot on our core business and this is again another example of backward vertical integration right so i would say the timing of this was perfect because uh, though not as uh, as uh, the economic downfall as sri lanka bangladesh is also going through a bit of a economic crisis so they are curtailing imports and they are also encouraging people to manufacture there so in that sense our timing has been excellent and we managed to complete the manufacturing facility one quarter before what we promised right so with that uh, we have actually been able to capture a great market share as well from bangladesh because some of our competitors who are importers cannot import any more right so this would i would say last about probably another 6 months right and the previous 6 months also this was there so this one year is a good year for us in bangladesh and it reflects in our numbers as well and not only that uh, dirusha we also uh, on top of the promise of manufacturing in bangladesh this is something that we did not say in the ipo again we have gone back to the raw material the main raw material that is required to manufacture solvents is alkyd resin we are also manufacturing now the alkyd resin right or we are we are going to start manufacturing the alkyd resin and we invested in alkyd resin plant in the same premises of where we have our factory so that helps the logistics plus it helps us with our margins as well so i think this project would complete in the next 4 to 5 months and so we are very focused on bangladesh and we see that opportunity in bangladesh and we are very excited about that opportunity as well uh, and even really as uh, nishal also correctly mentioned like uh, we are going through a economic crisis and uh, some would say it is not the right time for business and uh, jet is uh, catering to the construction sector and uh, construction sector together with the economic crisis facing some uh, challenging time and uh, what do you expect in the future where the construction sector would uh, lead to yes i am in uh, one of the first sectors to actually suffer when the interest rates went up the way it went up when the currency devalued was the construction industry uh, because obviously all our raw material from steel cement uh, and and even tiles and all that went up by about 80% the interest rates going up by to 30% was another issue because even if the developers can develop the buyer needs to be able to borrow at reasonable interest rates to buy so that was a big issue for the for for companies like us who were supplying the construction industry but the advantage jet has over a lot of these other companies is we have a refinish market so if you are doing steel you can only give steel to a new construction if you are doing paint paint is also used for com- uh, companies or 
or households who want to refinish. And uh, I, I would think about 70, 80% of our business is the refinish market. So if anybody has finished their, their house with white by jet or with our sale at wood coatings or jet wood coatings, you know, every so many years, they would want to refresh the, the coating. And that market was there to a certain extent. I mean, or, or didn't dip as much as the, the new construction market. Uh, I'm a part of the uh, Condominium Developers Association. And, and we have about eight of us who, who act on the executive committee, about 30 members of it. And we went, the construction industry went through a bit of a problem because also the government introduced a 15% VAT on new apartment sales. But we see that now the new, uh, now all those construction companies, all those developers are starting to develop again, including JET property. JET has a JET property division, and we are starting two projects. 103 houses in Hantana and 112 apartments in Thalavatukuda. Uh, so, so all the developers are starting again and we see that times can only be better. Uh, having said that, you know, even through a tough year, we did well. Great. So Nishal, uh, as the um, CEO of the company, you might have been facing challenges of inflation going up and the interest rates uh, going up, the finance cost of the company is rising and the construction cost is rising. So how did you manoeuvre through all these challenges and still made sure that Jati is making profits and growing? Yeah. So uh, these were the three main challenges, like you correctly said, that I think any company in Sri Lanka faced. And uh, if you take Jat, I think we are blessed because uh, especially when it came to the interest rates and the finance cost, before the IPO or prior to the IPO, also we were cash positive. Thereafter, we went for the IPO in 2021 and we got a certain amount of funds from the market. So with this, additionally, we had excess funds where we could invest as well as we did not feel the pinch of the interest rates going up. Even when it went up to about 30, 35%, actually it was advantageous because we had excess cash as well. So that was one, one way that we countered the interest rates and we didn't feel it uh, because of that. And we used it to our advantage for our growth in the company. Then if you take the inflation going up, again, when inflation goes up, the disposable income as well comes down. So again, the timing of our R&D center, I think that was uh, that helped us a lot because uh, with the R&D, we introduced many initiatives that brought down the cost of the product, right? Or the value for money of the products, we gave a better proposition to the end customer. So here some examples were, we introduced a paint, a white paint, that is at a lowest price point with a very good quality, right? So uh, this actually helped a lot of people to purchase again, because when they were ready to paint, they, they found it a bit difficult to purchase a normal paint. So this actually countered that. Then we also developed a three-in-one wood coating product, where traditionally you have the stain, uh, the top coat and a base if needed. But this three in one incorporates all of these three elements together. And uh, it's okay, it doesn't have the exact, the great finish that we usually do, but it has a very good finish that is suitable for ceilings, pergolas, where you see it at a certain distance or certain height, right? So this actually helped and got a lot of traction in the market. And uh, another very, uh, very interesting initiative was for the white by jet paint, right, which is our flagship brand in the decorative sector, we gave a eight year warranty for the first time in Sri Lanka. Again, this was through the research that we did with our R&D center. Right? So the R&D center, uh, while we invested heavily in great equipment, I would say state of the art and probably definitely not in this country, even South Asia, I don't think has some of the equipment that we do. And we invested a lot in the resources also, about 15 to 20 world-class chemists work in the R&D center. So they developed this for the first time, right? Uh, we call it the color guard technology. And we introduced this to the market as well. So someone who has to repaint within three years, now they don't need to repaint and they can, I mean, the paint lasts for eight years, which I would say even including external paint or exterior paint, right? So these were some of the initiatives we did. And I would say uh, with this, we also did not forget to look after our staff. We 
did not retrench any job at jet in within the last 3 to 4 years due uh, amidst covid amidst easter attacks i mean the economic uh, downturn nothing like that we even not only did we not retrench we gave increments every single year we gave bonuses right while expanding we looked after the staff and we relocated certain staff to our overseas projects and we restructured that way we didn't downsize which a lot of companies did right so i think that is another way that as a ceo how i managed the company and as a result right year on year we had two of the best years or the best years in jack from the top line and the bottom line both last financially and the previous year where we actually uh, all of these strategies that i i told you it actually materialized to the results Great. And uh, here now uh, we have seen that the export revenue of Jat has been increasing uh, over the years. And um, what are your plans uh, to the future? Are you have any plans of uh, entering into new markets uh, when it comes to export revenue generation? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, so for us, this year we we would be making about say thirty percent of our revenue. Our bottom line would be export oriented or dollarized. next year we hope that to push that to about 50% and then year on year increase that and to do that we have to make quite a substantial amount of investments you know to develop uh, markets like we have done now in in uh, in africa and even in bangladesh getting our manufacturing not only for the production of the pain but the alkyd plant like nishal said in sri lanka we gone in for a binder <coughs> binder plant so so we we will produce product in sri lanka that can be exported you know at a very competitive rate and therefore increase our re- revenue our export revenue and in addition to that we are also looking at the asean region we are talking looking at markets like vietnam indonesia uh, and 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 that part of the market uh, you know where we can expand our wood coatings because those markets have huge potential with wood coatings and we we have already gone and done some research where we will be looking at that very seriously we've gone into australia with our furniture range of product uh, signing our joint venture there and starting our showroom to start our kitchen business there because in australia the 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 housing market is really booming especially in western australia we've started in with western australia western australia the housing market is booming at a tremendous space as one project we are working on with has 11000 houses and apartments and all these people like to work with companies like ours because the australian furniture manufacturers is it's it's like like sri lanka a bit uh, unorganized and when it comes to a large order of supplying say 300 kitchens at at one given time or wardrobes or vanities that is not possible there and uh, with our supplies that we do from germany we can easily achieve this target so for us improving our export revenue is very important and we have invested accordingly in order to get that uh, revenue going plus like nishal said with more charge uh, and the ev charging business saudi arabia as we all know is investing a hell of a lot of money in in renewables and and uh going going uh, you know going away going green yes with that new home city and so on so for us these investments that we are putting in last year and this year will really uh, will be sh- seen in the 24 25 numbers of jet excellent and uh, so nisha uh, jet is investing heavily on technology and at the same time you have to ensure that the company is growing and making profits as well so how do you strike a balance between these high investments and making profits yeah uh, so basically we need to continuously invest in technology for main uh, for two main reasons one is that is on the verge of taking on the world right we have expanded in south asia and we are now looking at africa the asian markets australia middle east all of these countries so when we when we go to these countries one thing is we need our r&d to be top notch because the products reflect what the r&d puts into it and the digitalization process also needs to back our processes especially in these countries so that is that is one main reason the second reason is 
even in sri lanka if you take the top 4 to 5 companies they are large multinational paint companies so as a 100% sri lankan company we need to compete with them even in our homeland so with this we we consciously we understand that we have to invest in technology but like our numbers show though we are heavily investing we have always fulfilled the numbers that we have promised to the investors in terms of profitability in terms of turnover so i think this again is because we do our fundamentals right right and this is a part of a great strategic plan this is not something that is haphazard this is not something that we i mean think every financial year we have a very robust five year plan which we are executing at the moment so in these there are certain investments the timing of the investments are very important which uh, it's in the plan and then we know each year due to these investments what is the hit that we are taking in the profitability and we counter it by certain other initiatives to increase that or to balance that profitability and we know which years we will have a high profitability as well so we invest in even in things like training our staff all of that in order to match that profitability so the number game that we play i think is a result of a great senior management team that we have and a staff that backs us fully like i told you earlier during the tough time when a company stands for your staff then the staff does anything for you right because they know i mean we are not a multinational company but as, as a sri lankan company during these tough years we stood by our staff so they back us fully so our suppliers right we managed to pay them all on time even when the financial system was i mean in utter state right yet we managed to pay them so they have that respect and they also are a part of our vision so all these stakeholders are part of a vision and in that vision they are a part of a certain plan right so i think that makes it easy for us to invest heavily in technology while balancing the numbers and probably one of the few companies who do that and on top of that we pay a dividends of 40% as well right so i think that combination is quite unique to jack and uh, i think i'm proud of the fact that we could do all of this right simultaneously yeah great and uh, elia last but not least now vishal mentioned about the dividends as well uh, jack is a listed entity and what can the investors look forward to in the future yes so for for us you know we are where at this enviable state of even with all this investment we are with a positive cash flow i mean that's that's very creditable on the team i believe now not very many companies uh, you know can can boast of that and and that's why we are actually paying this 40% dividend in fact in spite of the investments we are making and we every year maintain that and we intend maintaining that so the shareholders can can depend on that so we are not we are not paying the dividends at the expense of our progress or, or expansion uh the, now we are number 2 in the paint industry i believe in sri lanka we intend to be number 1 uh we intend to like we discussed expand to different different territories and different product ranges in the international market we have obviously gone into forward and backward integration which will also add to the bottom line of the company so increasing our gps of the product so the all our shareholders and stakeholders as well can really look forward to jet being a strong uh, company uh, and uh, we 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 would believe that you know who, who those shareholders of ours who are there for the long term will stand to benefit tremendously wonderful and uh, i think the investors would be looking forward to that uh, future with confidence okay. and uh, thank you very much elian nishal for joining with us and uh, sparing your insights with us about the company and i think that would help the investors to make decisions in the future thank you very much for watching market pass and we will be back with another exciting episode soon thank you very much For more latest news, subscribe to FTTV.